Hi guys, it's Dr. Bay, and here's Bugsy, and today we're going to go over the introduction to carbonyls, specifically aldehydes and ketones, so stay tuned. Organic chemistry, taught by Dr. Bay. Reaction mechanisms, reactants to products, retrosynthesis, target deconstructing, molecules, spectroscopy, pouring through the sky. Try up the theory fly, give rise to the complexity of life. Living on a dream across the seven seas, learning about spectroscopy. Just as review, carbonyl compounds consist of several different functional groups like ketones, aldehydes, carboxylic acids, esters, and amides. For this next set of reactions, we will be focusing on reactions with specifically ketones and aldehydes. So, how can we make them? We can undergo an oxidation of secondary alcohols using PCC or Jones reagent to form a ketone or we could undergo ozonolysis to cleave an alkene into two carbonyls. Or we could even undergo hydroboration oxidation with a terminal alkyne to form an aldehyde. So in general, carbonyls are particularly electrophilic and are susceptible to nucleophilic attack because of two reasons. The first reason is due to resonance. If we break the pi bond of the carbonyl to form a new lone pair on oxygen, this creates another resonance contributor where there is a negative charge on oxygen and a positive charge on carbon. This means that the carbon atom of a carbonyl is much more electrophilic while the oxygen atom of a carbonyl acts more like a nucleophile. In terms of induction, the oxygen atom is more electronegative than carbon, so electron density is pulled towards the oxygen atom. Since the carbon atom is deficient in electron density, it's more susceptible to being attacked by a nucleophile. Now, when a carbonyl is attacked by a nucleophile at the electrophilic carbon center, the carbon undergoes a change in hybridization and geometry. The carbon atom in the carbonyl is sp2 hybridized since it has three steric groups connected to it, and it has a trigonal planar geometry. After nucleophilic attack, however, the carbon atom of the product becomes sp3 hybridized since the nucleophile is now attached, and it has a tetrahedral geometry. Aldehydes generally are more reactive than ketones for two reasons. Ketones have two alkyl groups on each side of the carbonyl that can contribute to steric interactions as the nucleophile attacks. The steric interactions destabilize the transition state of a nucleophilic attack because it's more crowded. On the other hand, aldehydes only have one alkyl group, so the transition state is less crowded and lower in energy. Formaldehyde is even more reactive than aldehyde since the carbonyl is only attached to much smaller hydrogen atoms. The second reason aldehydes are more reactive than ketones towards nucleophilic attack is due to electronic effects. Recall from learning about EAS reactions is that alkyl groups are electron donating groups. A ketone has two electron donating alkyl groups that can stabilize the partially positive charge on the carbon of the carbonyl, while aldehydes only have one electron donating group. The partially positive charge of an aldehyde is less stabilized than a ketone, which means that aldehydes are more electrophilic and more reactive than ketones. Aldehydes and ketones react with a wide variety of nucleophiles that can be classified by the nature of the attack atom. We are going to look at nucleophiles based on oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, hydrogen, and carbon nucleophiles. For the remainder of this video, we're going to focus on only oxygen nucleophiles attacking aldehydes and ketones. When an aldehyde or ketone is treated with water, the carbonyl group can be converted into a hydrate, also known as a geminal diol, where both hydroxyl groups are connected to the same carbon atom. 
Hydration can either be base catalyzed or acid catalyzed, and each respective mechanism differs depending on what condition the reaction is under. So let's start with the base catalyzed hydration. A strong base, like OH- acts as a nucleophile to attack the electrophilic center of a carbonyl. Then the pi bond of a carbonyl breaks to form a new lone pair on oxygen. Then O- gets protonated by a water molecule to form a hydrate molecule. The mechanism for acid-catalyzed hydration is slightly different. It starts with one of the lone pairs on oxygen in the carbonyl getting protonated by the acid, which forms a positively charged intermediate. Then water attacks the electrophilic center, and the carbonyl pi bond breaks to form a new lone pair on oxygen. Then a second mole of water comes in to deprotonate one of the extra hydrogen atoms, which then forms the final hydrate product. Acetal formation is very similar to hydration. In acidic conditions, an aldehyde or ketone can react with two molecules of an alcohol to first form a hemiacetal, which then forms an acetal. The, f the mechanism for this reaction is in two parts. Let's go over the first part of the mechanism to produce an intermediate called an hemiacetal. First, the carbonyl group is protonated, which makes the carbon atom more electrophilic. Then, nucleophilic attack of the alcohol occurs to form an oxonium intermediate. Then the oxonium is deprotonated to form an, a hemiacetal. The second part of the mechanism produces an acetal with the loss of a water molecule. It begins with the OH group of the hemiacetal getting protonated, which becomes a good leaving group. Then one of the lone pairs in OME reforms a carbonyl while water leaves. Then the second methanol molecule attacks the electrophilic carbon to generate another oxonium intermediate. Then the hydrogen atom gets deprotonated to form the final acetal product. So in summary, carbonyls are particularly electrophilic and are susceptible to nucleophilic attack because of resonance and induction. When an aldehyde or ketone is treated with water, the carbonyl can be converted into a hydrate molecule, but the mechanism depends on whether the reaction is under acidic or basic conditions. And lastly, an aldehyde or ketone can react with two molecules of an alcohol under acidic conditions to form an acetal. This mechanism consists of two parts. First, formation of a hemiacetal, and second, formation of an acetal with the loss of water. Organic.